Hey guys, so this is practice problem 10.3 from the Alexander and Sadiku book, Fundamentals of Electric Circuits. So the problem says, find I0 in the circuit below using mesh analysis. So this is the circuit, all the constants that were given, and we're given this I0, this is what we're looking for. So in this case, we're fortunate that everything is in phaser and impedance form so it's in the it's in the frequency domain so we don't have to convert to impedances and phasers it's already done for us so before we even start analyzing using mesh analysis we notice that this circuit is not a well-behaved circuit for mesh analysis remember for mesh analysis we're applying KVL so if we have voltage sources it's good but if we have a current source, then it's not well behaved, and so we have to write a constraint equation. So we have a current source here, so we need to write a constraint equation. So let's first pick our, our mesh current. So this would be mesh current one. This will be mesh current two. And notice I'm writing them all as phasers because we're in the frequency domain. So here we have our, our mesh currents. And because here we have the current source, we have to write our constraint equation. So our constraint equation is that I1 is equal to 10 at an angle of 0 degrees. It's the I1 current. This current source forces I1 to be this. So what we can do next would be to draw the helping circuit to see where we would write the remaining mesh equations. So if we were to draw the helping circuit, let's say over here, we have here our resistor, and remember we're turning off all our sources. So the current source becomes an open circuit, and the voltage source becomes a short circuit. So here we have this, the current source here is open, and our voltage source is a short. So clearly our remaining mesh equations have to be in here and here. So we write the remaining mesh equations, not in our helping circuit, but in our original circuit. So let's start with by writing KVL here. I'm going to start at this node. So we have KVL for this is mesh number two. So we're going to get zero equals minus 50 at an angle of, this should be a 50, at an angle of 30. Plus, I'm going to choose this current to go in this direction. So it's going to be 6 ohms times I1, I'm sorry, I2 minus I1. You have to be careful with the direction. Plus, we're going to choose the current to go down here. So it's going to be I2 minus I3. So J4 I2 minus I3. So this is a constant, we can move it over to the other side, so we get 50 at an angle of 30 equals. And now I1, we have it from here from our constraint equation, so we can just plug in 10 angle 0 for I1. So we're going to get 6 times I2 minus 6 times 10 at an angle of 0 plus J4 I2 minus J4 I3. So this is going to become 60 at an angle of 0. We can move it to the other side. So we get 50 angle 30 plus 60 at an angle of 0 equals. You have 6 I2 plus J4 I2 minus J4 I3. So we can collect common terms and we're left with, we have here, 6 plus J4 I2 plus minus J4 I3, and this whole thing is going to be equal to 50 at an angle of 30 degrees plus 60 at an angle of 0 degrees. And this is your first equation. So now we write KVL in the third mesh. So it's going to be 0 equals, and I'm going to start over here. So it's going to be minus J4. Now remember we chose the current going down, and 
that current was going to be the sum of I2 and I3. It's going to be the algebraic sum, right? But because the current is going down, it's I2. And then I3 is going against the direction of the current that we chose, so it's minus I3. Then we have the capacitor, and that's going to be, you have minus J2 times I3. And then you're going to get the resistor, which is going to be 8 I3. Now notice that the current that we're looking for, I0, is really just I3. So let's open parentheses. So this becomes minus J4 I2 plus J4 I3 minus J2 I3 plus 8 I3. So combining like terms, we're going to get minus J4 I2 plus 8 plus J2 I3. So you have the I3 terms, right? You have 8 plus J4 minus J2 becomes plus J2. That's all I did. So this is your second equation. So now we can put this into a matrix form. So our first equation, so in matrix form, it would look like this. You have the first equation here. You have I2, and you have I3, and then this is going to be here. So the coefficients of your first equation and the constant at the end. Here you have minus J4, this is going to be A plus J2, and 0. So if we were, so this is in rectangular form. However, it's easier to work in polar form. So if you were to convert into polar form, I've already done it for you over here, so feel free to pause the video and uh, take a screenshot or pause it and write it in your notebook. Um, to go from rectangular form to polar form, this is what you get. You plug it in your calculator and it, and it gives it for you. So basically this matrix over here is exactly the same as this. The only difference is that this one is in rectangular form, this is in polar form. This, These two polar phasors, it's difficult to add them in polar form. It's easier if they were in rectangular form, but if you were to add them, this is what you would get. So overall, this whole set of this this uh, system of equations is exactly the same as this, no difference. So we go back to our our circuit, and in our circuit, we realize that we just want I zero, which is just I three, right? So we don't have to solve for I two. All we need to do is solve for I three. So using Kramer's rule, I mean, we could find. So what I did here was I used Kramer's rule, I found the determinant with the first column replaced by the right hand side and I found the second, the determinant 2 which is the determinant of the matrix with the second column replaced by the right hand side. We don't really need determinant 1, we just need determinant 2 because that's how we get I3. So using Kramer's rule I3 becomes determinant 2 over the full determinant so it's this over this and if you were to do that you would get 5.969 at an angle of 65.45 degrees. This is amps. And this is equal to I0 because we see from our original circuit I3 is simply I0. So there was there's no need to go through all the steps to find I2. You just need to find I3, which is I0. I just put this here just for, for practice to recall how to do Kramer's rule. And that concludes the problem. This is our solution in phasor form for the current I0.